like to say good afternoon to everyone. One, two, come on, and say good afternoon. I typically get a lot of traffic uh, in my inbox. I just wanted to come on and say hello to everyone and um, this is Dr. Carrier again and it's always a pleasure to come on and share the word of God um, so hello <laughs> I think social media is sometimes going a little faster than me and uh Sometimes I have to catch up with the people. So I want to say good afternoon. And if you would like to leave a comment, um, I can see who you are. So if you can just uh, let me know uh, where you're tuning in from. I do have friends in Pakistan and Africa and India and America. And I want to say good afternoon to all of my uh, American friends. Pakistan and Africa. I think you all are a little later. I'm hoping I'm not catching everybody asleep, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, you guys can catch this on the replay if you're not able to catch it um, at this time. So, I wanted to talk about sheep and shepherd relationship, and uh, only because I consider myself a sheep. And if you read the comments, it tells you that most sheep are not very smart. <laughs> Um, typically, if they have all of this wool, you know, they're not very agile, so it means they're kind of clumsy, so they're, they're like not able to run really fast to get away from predators, and so to a predator, they look like a tasty morsel, amen? So the, the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd is typical of our relationship with Christ and him protecting us from the wiles of the enemy or the wiles of the devil and so I wanted to use Psalms 23 as a backdrop just kind just to kind of um, uh, <clears throat> focus my today what I'm going to be talking about so if we start from uh, the passage many times when we're talking we want to make sure we're using the Word of God as our guide because that is the truth amen so we're going to be in Psalms 23 it is a scripture I'm sure people have heard many times, but we're going to do a little more uh, work with it on today. So Psalms 23, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And that is the very first verse or in this passage. And again, in this sheep shepherd relationship, the purpose, uh, good afternoon or good morning or good evening, very late, Pastor Haroon, God bless you. Um, sheep and shepherd relationship. That's what we're going to talk about today. Evangelist Farrar, God bless you as well. The, 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 the sheep shepherd relationship is that the Lord leads and we are to follow. And many times when we don't follow, or if a sheep doesn't follow a shepherd, they'll get lost. They're, they're open prey. They're, they're vulnerable. They're, they're uh, uh, open to any, any forces or, any of the things that can come to harm it and so we have to realize that God has provisions that he has set parameters for us so that we are to function within those confines and that includes following after the shepherd uh, the Lord so again good afternoon again Pastor Haroon it's good to see you on blessings to you um, very the very first one says the Lord is my shepherd and I was thinking about how many people acknowledge that God is their shepherd, that they acknowledge him in all of thy ways, as in Proverbs 3 and 5, when it begins. And let me go there. I want to make sure I'm sharing scripture on today. I've taken time to do that. And so if you have a chance to follow along in your Bibles, we're going to be going through the Bible on today to encourage you that as sheep following along as a shepherd, he definitely has our best interest at heart. And so there are many principles in this particular passage 
that will be helpful to you as you continue or you learn to follow Christ as he is the head and we are to follow him. So Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, when we were talking about the Lord is my shepherd. And so if you acknowledge him in all your ways, that's Proverbs 3. And we start with, um, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, that's Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, and lean not to your own understanding. And you acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. That is uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And I'm thinking about the Lord as a shepherd. And many times in order for us to come out right, for the things of God to be manifest in our life, or for us to have the promises of God manifest in our life through this Bible, this Holy Bible, this Word of God, we want to make sure we are following after Christ and in order to follow Him many times that means acknowledging Him that means asking His wisdom asking knowledge, asking for counsel before or if we make decisions or if we just go out to do something we have consulted the Lord as to how He wants to proceed Amen, and it was telling them in Proverbs, I'm sorry, in Psalms 32 and 8 I do remember as I said the Lord and sheep shepherd relationship you're following the Lord and again I remember and this is Psalms 32 and 8 let me share that with you this is a, a very awesome scripture that I remember there were times in my young um, walk with Christ that I would complain about I can't see how things are going to work out I don't understand your next the next step and and what am i to do when my my knowledge is so limited or my understanding is limited and god led me to psalms 32 and 8 and it says i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go i will guide you with my eyes the word tells you that just you do not uh you're not led by what you see you are you are uh, led by your faith, Amen. We 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 as people of God, we have to understand everything we attain to when it comes to Christ is by faith. And so, the Word of God, if He is your shepherd, you don't need to see what's around the next corner. You don't need to know. He says He will guide you with His eyes. Our job is to simply follow. How many people have picked up on that? If you want to have a close intimate relationship and fellowship with Christ. Our job is to acknowledge Him and ask the Holy Spirit through our prayer and our consecration and our understanding of the Word and our setting aside time to meditate. The, meditate. the Lord will begin to return to us information. The Word says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things you did not know. So if you want to know something from Christ, take the time to sit down and set aside time to acknowledge him to connect with him amen so the lord being your shepherd you're going to want his direction you're going to want his knowledge and wisdom on the ways to go and when you do that the next part of that verse said i shall not want if you allow god to lead as a shepherd and you follow as a sheep I shall not want. That is the next verse. We're in Psalms 23. Amen. So let's go there. I have that up, but we are skipping around because we're expounding on the verses on tonight. So we're talking about the sheep shepherd relationship. And in verse number one, the second part says, I, the Lord is my shepherd. We talked about that. I shall not want. That means you shall not lack anything. Lack Lack is not a part of the program when you follow Christ, when you allow God to lead, when you allow the shepherd to lead the sheep, there is, you will find there is sufficiency where he leads, amen, so again, Proverbs 4 is where I wanted to just uh, kind of reiterate on this particular passage when it says, I shall not want, many people get their needs and wants mixed up, many things we just want it. God said he supplies your needs. Amen. That means sometimes whatever you have is sufficient because it was provided.
provided by the Lord. And so many times we have to realize our eyes get big and we start looking at our neighbors and we start looking around at other people and wondering why we don't have what they have or what comforts they may have that we have not attained to at that time. But again, the word says, if you follow after Christ, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. That is what he says. So if you're still alive, you may not have all that you desire, but your needs are met. If you are still alive, your needs have been met. Many people don't understand it. They, they want to have a life with not any suffering. They don't want to have any discomfort. They don't want to have anything that they have to strive for. They want everything to be easy street. But many times, you may see people in ministry like myself, but I've been working at this thing for some decades now. So there were times when I had issues with not having enough or going through those stages of the wilderness, but I yet still kept pressing on. So the Lord being your shepherd, God bless you, evangelist or pastor Danish. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in. We're talking about the sheep shepherd relationship on this evening. The Lord is, if the Lord is your shepherd, you're allowing him to lead you. He says you shall not want. That means he provides what is sufficient. He will give you all that you need. Whatever he provides is enough. Many times we may not want it. We may not desire the amount, but God supplies our needs. That's what the word tells us. If we go to Philippians 4, 11 through 13, that's what he says. He says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am in, therewith to be content. How many can say that? How many are content with where God has you right now? Can you survive in a place where you may not have all that you want? You may have only your needs met, but the word is telling you in Philippians for he said to learn to be content in whatever state you find yourself in. In verse 12 of Philippians 4, it says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full, to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. This is saying that when there is times when you, you may not have all that you want and God through his word has told you he will supply your needs many times. We have to go and be okay with what God has given us. We have to learn the art of contentment. The art of not being um, discontent because we are up or down or we have a lot or we have a little. We have to learn as the word has told us in Philippians 4 to be content in whatever state we find ourselves in. So many times when you find a person that looks like they're on easy street, trust me, they are just either come out of a storm, about to go in a storm, or they have just are about to in, uh, uh, in the middle of a storm. So we are all products of the work of Christ in our lives. And many times, again, we have to adopt this sheep shepherd relationship. We follow and we, we when, where Christ leads, we follow. And when we do that, in the first verse, I'm still there. The Lord will be your shepherd. He will be your guide. He will guide you with his eyes and you shall not want. You shall have what you need provided. So now we're going to go to verse number two of um, Psalms 23 and again good evening to everyone I, I came on I guess uh, you guys are uh, getting a bunch of new friends in my inbox and I wanted to come on and say hello I can't possibly address everyone's uh, individual requests or everyone's individual hello but today is the day I'm saying hello to all of my new friends and God bless you all again I can't preach for everyone I can't pay for everyone's uh, 
children's ministry or blah 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 but what i can do is continue to share the word of god and from time to time as god gives me opportunity and as my schedule permits i will uh at some point be a blessing uh or being associated and connecting with some of my friends amen so again just wait give me a chance there's a lot of you all it's just one of me and again i have a very busy life it may not seem that way but i do amen and so i allow god to use me as a vessel and when i do that i stay busy amen so you all don't get offended uh at one point some point i, I may get to you or try to get to you or pastor haroon will reach out to you or could call pastor haroon so that we're able to make some type of arrangements maybe quicker but i am limited amen but again we're talking about psalms 23 we're talking about the Lord being your shepherd and how you shall not want. So verse number two, it says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. And if we would go to Psalms 127 and 2, that's what it expounds more about lying down in green pasture, which means God takes us to places that are flourishing, that are lush, that will fix or uh, our, 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 like I say address what it is that we need many times we may be in a place of lack or in a place of where you know the brook has dried up or God may have been blessing in that place in a season but he may have moved because you know when the sheep eat amen many times they eat up the grass or they graze and they eat up the vegetation and so then at that point it's just dirt clods so the shepherd has to move his flock move his herd move the group of sheep to more where there's other places where there's more eating or better eating or be able to take them to a place where there are more replenished supplies so that they continue to be fed. So Christ has the blueprint. He knows how to direct our path so that we are in places where we are being fed and that we are what it says. He makes us to lie down. There are many times God has to make us lie down because we are constantly uh, moving in a way that does not permit him to be in charge. Many of us are worried and tired because we're trying to do God's job. The word has told you he will make you to lie down in green pastures. And the next part of verse number two says he will lead me beside still waters. That means beside peaceful streams, he directs and guides his sheep. The shepherd directs and guides his sheep during times of violence, danger, and trans transitory things sometimes the word the world is moving very swiftly sometimes change can come in very quick very swift amen and so you need someone or something to anchor you and so the word of god is telling you when you have allowed the shepherd to lead you when you have been a follower of the shepherd you may be in a place where violence or danger or transitory things are around but because you followed the shepherd amen he he will make sure you are rested. He will make sure you lie down in plush places to feed, to rest your mind, your mental, and your spiritual. He will lead you beside peaceful streams. That means put you in environments where you can thrive and do well. Many times we are in places that are toxic, around toxic people, and God may have a whole nother area, whole nother territory, a whole nother assignment, a whole nother tribe where you will be able to flourish amen where you will have peace and joy amen you will not be in a situation where there's constant contention or or, or resistance or or competition or things that will cause the work of god not to move smoothly so that's verse number two he will make you lie down in green pasture and leave you beside still water psalms 127 and 2 it says in vain it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows 
For so he gives his beloved sleep. Amen. So sometimes we as believers, because we may not be attuned or intimate in this sheep fellowship, sheep shepherd relationship, many times we allow the things of this world to get us down and it have us pacing the floor. It have us with insomnia, have us where we can't sleep, have us where our mind is on a hamster wheel, have us where we cannot focus or concentrate on the things of God. He has told us he makes us to lie down in green pasture. He leads us beside the still waters and this means we have to rest. We cannot be worried all the time. Many times people are not resting properly but the word has told you in 127 too he gives his beloved sleep. You are not supposed to stay up eating the bread of sorrow. You are not supposed to stay up worrying about what only God can and fix. You are not supposed to stay up worrying, pacing the floor, worrying about what only the shepherd has knowledge on what to control and how he wants to orchestrate things. So we thank God that this passage here, Psalms 23, is giving us instruction on the sheep shepherd relationship. We are to follow as Christ leads. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. This leads us to verse number 3 of Psalms 23. Verse number 3 says, He, re what does it say? He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. It said, He he restores my soul. That means he strengthens you. He pours into you. We have unlimited access to the bread of life and the, the, the water of redemption. Amen. He will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm have eaten. The word of God has told us that we will allow Christ to lead as the shepherd and we to follow as the sheep. There are benefits to following Christ when he is your shepherd. God bless you, Evangelist Iqbal. I can't pronounce your name. Mashi, I'm not sure, but God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. We're talking from Psalms 23. And we're talking about being led by the shepherd. And we are sheep again. Sheep are dumb. They're funny shaped. They're prone to predators falling and getting lost. And so we need the shepherding of God. We need the guidance of God. We need the wisdom of the Lord. We need the counsel of the Lord. We need the wisdom and teaching of the Holy Spirit to give us safeguards to provide for us to be able to move along in a path where we are safe and we are bringing glory to the name of the Lord, the word has told us he will restore your soul. Many of you, your soul can be eaten up and torn away by relationships and different things you have involved yourself in that are that is sin that leave you riddled like, like Swiss cheese, like with holes in you. Amen. So God is in the business of restoration. The shepherd is in the business of restoring the sheep. He is in the business of putting things back together in the right places. Listen, the word says all Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. That's a song that says, order my steps in the in your word, dear Lord. And the, the scripture also tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So whatever we may go through, the word of God is telling us he restores my soul. You can be restored by following the shepherd. If you are depleted in any way, if you are lacking or you had a deficit in any way in your mind, body, and soul, the word is told you he restores my soul you can get your strength back you can get your mojo back you can get your second win you can get another chance you can get all of that when you are connected to the shepherd you as a sheep are to follow you don't control the shepherd you simply follow as a sheep and if you follow him he will find he will give you the the process or the the principles to restore your 
the soul. Many times being in the presence of God is through worship or maybe laying prostrate or, or you may pray. You may not have words to pray. You may be in a mode that you just want to lay before the Lord and worship Him and you just want to bless Him. And so therefore God will pour into you. You will find when you get up off of that prostrate, prostate situation where you have been praying and laying before God that you will feel renewed. You will feel a, a, a weight lifted off of you. The word has told you to cast your cares on him because he cares for you. So we're going to go to Isaiah 40 and 31 because the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy when the enemy comes in like a flood the lord will lift up a standard against him so this is the scripture i'm talking about where he restores the soul of those that are tired and those that are weary and those that are worn and those that are bruised and those that life has beat up on you like the waves beat up on the the, the rocks at the sea amen the word of god is telling you as a shepherd he will restore your soul and so i Isaiah 40 and 31, it says, But those that wait on the Lord mm, 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 shall renew their strength. Amen. God will renew your strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Many of you are running on fumes. You have to follow the shepherd. Get connected to the shepherd so that he may strengthen you and put back the pieces of your soul to pour into you. Amen. Listen, John 7 and 38, that talks more about the shepherd and, and restoration. John 7 and 38, it says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out, well, let's go on 37. It said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Amen. This is John 7, 37 and 38. And he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So there is restoration. There is also the opportunity for for your heart to, your soul, your spirit to overflow. Amen. Because you have drank from the fountain of Jesus Christ. You have drank from Emmanuel's vein. Amen. You have gotten restored and renewed in your mind and your body and your thoughts. But it says, restore my soul. Joel 2 and 25. And it says, I will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten. That's Joel 2 and 25. The word of God has given you uh, authority and uh, what well, it has given you uh, a guarantee of what he says in his word he will strengthen you he, he he pours in us we have unlimited access to the water that that one the water that we drink that we will never thirst and he will restore the years that your bad decisions that sin that tricking that 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 deceit that walking around in the fog of an illusion have taken from you god is able to restore those when you are allow the shepherd to shepherd you when you follow the shepherd he has a place and a time to restore you he has a plan if you follow the shepherd as a sheep amen so now we're back uh we're, where was verse number three of psalms 23 now we're on verse number four now, when we talk about he leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, that means that God gives us opportunity to where we can grow. Amen. How you doing, Providence Donna? God bless you. I'm going to be inviting you to the graduation August 31st. We will have dinner. You're invited. Uh, dinner's on me. Amen. So I would love for you to come and have words of encouragement for my first year students that will be graduating. But we're talking about shepherd and sheep relationship on today many times he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name say when we follow christ when we follow the shepherd the shepherd as being a sheep there is something that comes up on you that will give you the ability to do what it is he has called you to do he will lead you in the path of righteousness he will lead you in the path of where there's the sin get the sin out amen he wants to take you on a clean clear path amen he wants to give you a new beginning a new tribe a new direction a new environment we need to follow christ and where he wants to lead us many times we may have been going astray or going in a direction that was not bringing a uh, righteousness 
to him that we were not walking in good standing amen god bless you nabila asif god bless you pastor As asif or and uh thank you all for tuning in i'm sharing today on the sheep shepherd relationship amen yes um yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i wanted to talk about that scripture because people think the bible is mere words but i will share with you all i was in a very difficult situation one day i was in my neighborhood and i was walking out exercising and i was walking down this up and down these hills and i had gotten really tired i was stressing myself i was working out and on my way where I was coming down the last big hill and before I got to the bottom of the hill I saw this big huge dog and the big huge dog he came he was in the street and he was going beside his home and I was hoping that I saw the tail about to go around the corner but and as I was walking I uh, we, he came he turned around he turned around and came back towards me and I was walking, I was tired, so I couldn't really run. And I was thinking, oh my God, what can I do? And I began to quote the 23rd numbers of Psalms. I was saying, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Listen, you can quote the scriptures and tell, the speak the word of God out of your mouth, and demons is tremble. Listen, that dog, I could feel him wanting to bite the back of my legs. I could feel his hot breath. Breath. I could feel his teeth shaving up and down the back of my legs. But as I quoted the scripture, I kept walking. I did not fear. I didn't shirk. I didn't run. I didn't jump. I just held my head up. I kept walking and I began to quote the 23rd numbers of Psalms. And the dog, he stopped and turned his head like this, turned around and went home. Yes, you can ward off all kinds of demons and demonic attacks if you use the word of God I believe in using the word of God yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil these are words you can speak to yourself if you're going through difficult situations again this is a sheep shepherd relationship you can call on the Lord the word tells you the word the word the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and those that are saved can run it run to to it and be safe amen so i call on the name of the lord he says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil there's a scripture that says why are you fearing those that can only kill the body you need to fear the one that can kill the body and the soul that is jesus christ our lord and savior we need to make sure that we when we are not fearing that man the word says what can man do to me the word has told you the lord is the light of my life of whom shall I fear he is the strength of my life whom shall I be afraid amen we're not supposed to be afraid this scripture is telling you yea though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death it could be the lowest point of your life they could have told you you got something that's incurable they could have told you that the, the, the loan will not go through that you can't have what you are applying for that whatever you're trying to do is not going to work out but the word has told you not not to fear, not to fear for your, it says, listen, uh, no, Psalms 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Don't be afraid of anything and anybody. Fear the Lord. Amen. If you have the fear of the Lord in you, he says, a host of angels are camp around about those that fear the Lord. You have to fear him. Listen, sheep shepherd relationship. That's what we're talking about on this afternoon. Psalms number 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Wherever you go, whatever dark road, whatever dark situation, whatever unbelievable, uncanny, I can't believe it that has happened to you. Christ is with you. The word has told you in Romans, what can separate us from the love of Christ? There is nothing, not even peril, hunger, nakedness, nothing. 
can separate us from the love of Christ. Amen. So that is what we're talking about on this morning. The sheep shepherd relationship. Are you allowing Christ to lead as a shepherd and you as a sheep following? Because these are benefits in Psalms 23 that are available to you when you follow after Christ as a shepherd and you are a sheep amen sheep don't make their own decisions sheep follow the shepherd sheep don't go their own way sheep follow the shepherd amen so we're in psalm 23 he said his rod it says his authority and his rule that means he has all power whatever it is you're going through the word has told you in john it think he says if i be lifted up i will draw all men unto me all power in heaven and earth is in my hands. Amen. The Lord God has all power. So he, the rod, he has a rod. It is the scepter. It is to show he has power and authority. He has rulership over the sheep. Amen. He takes uh, 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 he takes accountability. He takes, he, he steps up. He's like, no, nah, wait a minute. Those, they belong to me. Amen. When you are a shepherd, you stand up for your sheep. You defend your sheep and his staff. Staff is like a long stick with a hook on the end of it. The stick is used to bring us back from the brink. It is a defender and a protector. He can, he can be relied upon. The shepherd and the sheep, the relationship in Psalms 23, it talks about when you walk with when you go through whatever you go through Christ is there and the rod his rod his rod is there to protect you his staff is there to protect you he has all power and authority in the spirit realm and also in the natural realm the the shepherd has a, a long stick where he can pull his sheep to him he has a long reach where he can reach out and pull them back our arms are too short to box with God amen the word says is the Lord's ear too heavy that he cannot hear and his arms too short that he can not save. Amen. Listen, the word of God is telling you if you are a sheep, you need to be following the shepherd. When you follow the shepherd, after you have received all of the things in verse 1, 2, 3, and 4, he says you're going to receive comfort as well. How many of you know you need comfort when you're going through a dark time? You need comfort when you're in the valley of the shadow of death. You need comfort. You need somebody reliable. Somebody has some power. Somebody has some authority. Somebody that cares. That's what it tells me when I, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The Lord will be there. Verse number 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. When you are a follower of Christ, when you allow the Lord to be your shepherd and you follow after him and all that he has given you to do, he says he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Listen, it's not just any table. This is the king's table. It is prepared by the Lord. This is explaining to you when he brings you out victory after victory because of his grace and favor and those who oppose you outwardly or inwardly. They must observe. God is not going to hide how he wants to bless you. When people have put their mouth on you, when they have dishonored you, when they uh, discounted you, when they underestimated you, when they have lied on you, scandalized your name misused you anything that is evil that has come against you God is able to make your enemies your footstool he's able to make your enemies put it put them in a position to watch you eat put them in a position to watch you be successful that what they tried didn't work God make sure they see it make sure they hear about it he makes sure they're informed when they thought they did something grand to sit down on your program when they thought when they didn't support you that you would not go forward when they thought when they put their mouth on you the other ministers would follow suit but in the, the end the Lord says he prepared the table before your enemies he prepared the table 
before your enemies in their presence is not going to be hidden when God raises you up as you have gone through because you are a follower of the shepherd you are a sheep God has prepared a table for you and it's going to be in the presence of your enemies he's going to bring you out over and over again by his grace favor as mercy and loving kindness and after he brings you out and your enemies watch you eat he anoints your head with oil Oil. That means he raises you up. He promotes you. He honors you right in their face. You will become prosperous in the things of God because you have remained faithful. The word has told you if you will be faithful of a few things, he will make you ruler over many, many times. We want more than what God wants to give us. But if we are being led by Christ, we have to be, be sure we are following the dictates of what he wants. Or is he your shepherd and are you following? Maybe you're trying to do something outside of what he has planned for your life or you want more than what he has planned for your life. But this is telling you he is your shepherd and you will not want or lack any good thing if you are to follow him. He says he anoints your head with oil and your cup runs over. Listen, your life will over flow with blessings when you follow Christ, when you allow the Lord to be your shepherd. There is nothing that he will withhold from you. There is no evil that can befall you that he's not aware of. There is nothing that can come upon you to catch you by surprise because he guided you with his eyes. You have to trust the shepherd. He is the shepherd. He is supposed to care for the sheep. He cares for the sheep. He defends the sheep. He comforts the sheep. He feeds the sheep. He directs the sheep. He, he leads us where we should go. Amen. To bring the most honor to his name. Listen. He said my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is saying when you are a sheep and you follow the shepherd. Amen. He has a good plan. A Jeremiah 29 and 11 plan for your life. Not to do you evil but to give you a future and an expected hope amen and so goodness and mercy are angels to follow you to make sure that gets done the work that God has started in you it will be completed the word has told us he that's begun a great work in you is able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ so guess what he's not going to stop working with you he's not going to stop working on you he's not going to stop being your shepherd and trying to lead you we have to submit to that particular role. Submit to the role of being a sheep. Submit to the role of being dumb. Submit to the role of not knowing everything. Submit to the to the idea that the enemy will get after us and that we can become fodder and we can be destroyed by the works of darkness when we are out here without a shepherd. The word has already told you. If you have a shepherd, you have you have nothing to want. He's going to provide for you. He's going to defend you. He's going to guide you. He's going to comfort you. He's going to lead you in the right way that you should go. He's going to provide all of your needs. He's going to see to it that no evil befalls you because he's reliable to defend you. And after all all of that he will promote you and honor you in front of your enemies amen God is a good God the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want how many of you all have have bought into that hook line and sinker Christ is the head and we are to follow he is our shepherd wherever he leads we are to follow we're not to question we're not to worry we are to follow amen our shepherd knows exactly where the good watering holes are where the plush and luscious green grass is he knows where the rest stops are he knows all of the blueprint he knows where to place you at the set and appointed time to get the most glory out of your life to get the most glory out of your testimony amen the blessings to overflow in your life you have to follow christ 
as your shepherd. That intimacy, knowing him over anything, knowing his voice over any other voice, following after the voice of Christ. He said, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. So if you find yourself in a place where you don't have any joy, where there is no luscious streams, where there is no, no, no none of your wants, none of your needs are being met, perhaps because you are not following the shepherd. The shepherd has already told you in Psalms 23 what to expect if you follow him. If you are in lack and you don't have what you need and your soul is, is torn up, your your needs are, are out of whack, you don't, you, you, you're afraid, you're worried, you have fear, you need to get in line with the shepherd. The shepherd protects the sheep and in a relationship in a way that you don't have to fear. You don't have to look over your shoulder you can by faith trust that God has you in the palm of his hand. I told you Psalms 127. What does it say? Psalms 28. What did I have there? No, Psalms 32 and 8 said he will guide you with his eyes so we don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid because Christ is our ruler. He is our God. It says in the first verse, I am the shepherd. He says the Lord is my shepherd. And because I allow him to, I follow after him and I submit to his will and submit to his way. In the end, my cup is going to run over and I'm going to be promoted with honor. And listen, blessings will overflow for my life in Jesus' name. Make sure you are following and honoring the shepherd. Fear the shepherd over all things. If you follow the shepherd, you will not be in lack or want. Psalms 20.